this uh, this uh, ridiculous legal game um, that we have to cite some kind of law that you know to show that what you're doing is wrong. Well, one, you've admitted that you have no evidence. And it's just a, basically a circle of logic. And I you, haven't. I have not admitted no well, anything. Well, yeah, you, yeah, you said the law applies because the law said so. So whether you want to admit that that's circular, it is. So rational people can agree to that. Rational people with you know who are acting in good faith. Well, yeah, if, if that's circular logic. Your own laws require that you have what's called due process, okay? You are not permitted under your code to arbitrarily attack people, to arbitrarily take people's property. So to answer your question and play your game, you're violating your own due process uh, requirements by not having evidence. So can we move further now to a resolution of this garnishment? How are you wanting to resolve it? Uh, I want you to back off today. I want this garnishment stopped until you and you and the people you work with can provide more than just a logical fallacy to show that your constitutional laws apply to Loretta and that there's any jurisdiction over her. So you haven't provided us a reason to stop the garnishment. Uh, I mean, all, you, you arguing with me is not. I'm not arguing. Re- you are arguing, and no. it doesn't provide a reason for no. the garnishment. An, an argument is a collected series of statements leading to a definite proposition. It's an intellectual process. We're not really engaging in that. All you're doing is contradicting me, and you're disagreeing with me. Uh, what I have presented to you is that, by your own admission, all you have is the law as evidence of itself, by, okay? And that you do not have any evidence to prove that your Constitution laws apply. That's what I presented to you. Now, if you don't want to exercise good faith and at least put the brakes on, we will, we will take what we've gotten from you today. We will bring your bad faith and, 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 and due process violation uh, higher up the food chain. We'll take it to your supervisor. And we're going to contact the company that you're forcing to give Loretta's money over to, and we're going to contact them and let them know about this conversation, that you have no evidence, that you are acting in bad faith, and uh, even though I gave you the legal grounds and the factual grounds, you still will not do the right thing. So can we take a step back, exercise some good faith, and talk about getting this stopped? Sir, we are exercising good faith. Uh, no, you're not. If you want to exercise good faith, then what you'll do is you'll talk about dropping this garnishment right now. If you dispute the garnishment, there's ways to dispute it. I would suggest getting an attorney to find out how to do that. <laughs> you don't have any evidence. You rely on a logical fallacy. If we were to take you to court on Monday and call you and, and call you as a witness to come into court and testify to what you're talking about right now, do you really want to go under oath? and testify that your laws apply because they say they apply. Do you see what I'm getting at about bad faith? Sir, you can do, I mean, that, that's your option. You can dispute the garnishment. I mean, I'm not trying to prevent you from doing that. No, what you're doing is... Because you, the, you, the laws that the court follows are the same laws that the Department of Revenue follows. Oh, yeah. But you're, ma'am, your organization owns the courts, and you pay the judges. I mean, how seriously can we take that? I don't now, your statute law says 143.902 that garnishments apply to taxpayers. We're questioning how my wife became a taxpayer because federal courts have ruled that there are taxpayers and non-taxpayers, and tax laws only apply to taxpayers. So how do you prove that my wife has the status of a taxpayer other than simply by asserting it over and over and over ad nauseum? Well, if you're saying that she's not a taxpayer... Well, when the tax was assessed, why didn't you protest the assessment? Oh, madam, if you had access to the file, you'd find dozens of letters we've written in where I've offered to pay any tax that we owe yep. if we could be shown some objective factual evidence that my wife is a taxpayer. Okay, because you, you would have gone to the Administrative Hearing Commission if that was the case. The Administrative Hearing Commission, we've been before the Administrative Hearing Commission, which is, again... Uh, a rubber stamp uh, operated by someone who is employed by or has been a former employee of the Missouri Department of Revenue. And, uh, you know, again, the point... I mean, the thing is, is that you, you, 
you were telling me that you don't follow the laws of the state of Missouri. It's kind of hard no, to... No, no, ma'am. Do no, not characterize I'm not it that, that way. No, ma'am. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm are you saying you that, that you are claiming that my wife is a taxpayer? And your only basis for claiming that is because you say so. You can't offer us any evidence whatsoever that she has that status. That's all we're asking for. If she is a taxpayer and you can prove it, you've got your money. I've told the Department of Revenue that many times. Ma'am, this is, this is a lack of evidence on your side. Do not characterize it as, uh, as Loretta or Dr. Hines' uh, shortcomings because it's offensive. Um, if you guys have the evidence that he's requi requested all these years, you just have to put it on a table. But telling me that the law applies because the law applies is not going to cut it. And, and, and while we're at it, how does your statute, how do your statutes stand up as evidence that your Constitution applies to Loretta? Could you explain that one to me? Or does the, Const the Constitution or apply to Loretta? Yeah, I was asking what evidence you have to show the Constitution and, and, and state law applies to Loretta, and you said state law. That was your answer. So it, what, it applies to everyone that's a citizen of Missouri. Well, uh, that's, but my question was, and, we, and you answered this, that you are of the opinion that just because someone is physically in Missouri, that the Constitution and the laws apply to them. You agree to that. And then when I asked you about the evidence to support that, you said the code, the laws, as if the laws were evidence of themselves, which is, well, come on, it's nonsensical. What evidence would you have to show that the Constitution has any application to Loretta? I guess I don't understand what you're arguing. And, and, and yet you'll, you'll, offend me, you'll, you'll try your best to offend me by saying that I or Dr. H needs to go get a lawyer. To explain it, if you don't understand I, it, and you're, I would recommend it still. well, but you're, you're a jur you hold an advanced university degree, and I'm asking you for <laughs> evidence that your constitution applies to me or Loretta just because we're physically in Missouri, and you 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 can't you can't offer an answer. Well, because I don't understand your question. I'm asking you for evidence to prove that the constitution applies to me or Loretta just because we're physically in Missouri. And I, and I'm. I've tried explaining that to you, but because you don't find my answer acceptable, it it doesn't matter. No, you didn't try to explain about the Constitution. You tried to explain about the laws by saying that the laws are evidence of themselves because they say so. But you made no attempt to address why the Constitution would apply just because someone is physically in Missouri. So as someone holding an advanced university degree, a doctorate, uh, what evidence do you have to show that your constitution applies just because of you know me or Loretta we're physically in Missouri? Sir, I, I, I apologize, but I'm not going to keep having this conversation with you. I mean, I'm not sure where it's going and if it's relevant to what you're wanting to resolve, which is the garnishment. Well, the, that 20-some-odd seconds of uh, uh, that pregnant pause was, was very, very telling. Uh, I'm, where I'm going, I've already explained it to you, that anyone paying attention would understand. I think what you're just trying to do is a lawyer dodge, as if we're so, so stupid that we'll, we'll buy that. Uh, where we're going with, and I'll repeat it, is that you don't have any evidence to support your finding or your opinion that the Constitution laws apply and you have any jurisdiction over Loretta at all. And, and what it, I'm saying is that if you believe that there's no evidence, then dispute the garnishment. But, but our, I mean, arguing with me about this logical, illogical argument, it's not going to, it's not going to resolve the garnishment. Well, it may not resolve it with you because you're not exercising any good faith. But what's the name of your supervisor and their contact information? Because we'll we'll relate what what you've told us to them.